And uh, the musical was originally supposed to have a live audience, but now performers will be showing off their vocals on Netflix. Diana, which tells the story of the late princess Diana Spencer, started previews on Broadway in early March, but never officially opened at the Long Acre Theater. Instead, the cast and crew performed the musical for cameras in an empty theater and put the finished product on the digital platform for broadcast next year, before the show welcomes a live audience again. Gina DeWall, who plays Diana, says the change is a wild jump no one expected. An audience of how many, 400 to an audience of 200 million, it's just such a wild um, jump in perspective of what this project is and, and who's going to see it. Producers with the show say the new opening night will be May 25th, 2021. A new animated film streaming now is generating award season buzz. CNN's Rick Damagella has a look at Wolf Walkers. A long time ago, the Irish were mad superstitious. Telling tales like the man wolves of Ossery. Men and women who are cursed to live in the forest as wolves while their human bodies lay asleep. A tale of Irish folklore comes to life in the animated film Wolf Walkers. They can even see smells with their wolf vision. Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings actor Sean Bean voices one of the main characters, but the two young female leads are new to voice acting. But we could hunt them together. Wolves, bears, dragons even. <laughs> I play Robin and she's a very brave, independent, strong-willed character. Unlike most teenagers, I mean, she doesn't care what anyone thinks about her and she is not afraid to push the limits, especially with her father. Hey, do I know Yas? Yes. Maeve is a feisty little wild girl who lives in the forest with a pack of wolves. And because she's grown up in the forest, she really has no inhibitions and she's not afraid to show her emotions. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. The pandemic continues to keep many people away from movie theaters this holiday season, and it's being reflected in the box office numbers. Coming in at fifth was The War with Grandpa. It only brought in $170,000 in ticket sales. Fourth was Half Brothers. Fatal opened in third place. The Crudes, A New Age, slipped into second, and now Monster Hunter came in as number one. Now, Grammy-nominated soprano, Sarah Brightman is making the days merry and bright with her first ever Christmas live streaming event. The British singer's new concert, Sarah Brightman, a Christmas symphony, took place over the weekend and is available through tomorrow on her website, sarahbrightman.com. A hard rock guitar legend playing a different tune these days. Former Deep Purple guitarist Richie Blackmore has a new Renaissance themed Christmas music album. Sarah Costa has that story for us. Here we come a caroling among the leaves so green. Here we come a wandering so far to be seen. Blackmore's Night is a Medieval and Renaissance music group of guitarist Richie Blackmore and his wife Candace Knight. And God send you a happy new year. We play castles, historical venues. We play a little bit of everything, so it's kind of family-based music. Um, we do Renaissance, rock, folk music, uh, tavern music, instrumentals, you name it, we've got something for everybody. A caroling marks their latest foray in the ancient arrangements of Christmas music. We did a little town of Bethlehem too. It's the uh, European English version that Richie actually used to go around singing when he was a wee lad and he was a caroler and went from door to door um, collecting shillings. Yes, shillings back in those days. We're going back um, a couple of hundred years now. And <laughs> I used to go around carol singing. And I would sing um, A Little Town of Bethlehem, but it has a totally different melody to the way that it's sung and played here in America. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Here We Come a Caroline by Blackmore's Night is out now on CD digitally and as a limited edition release on translucent green vinyl. Did you see SA Live's Christmas special in primetime last Friday night? If you missed it, oh, don't worry. You can catch it again today at 1 p.m. Hey there, everyone. Oh, 
We are definitely getting into the Christmas spirit here on SA Live. Stop it! Okay, okay. All right. What? Obviously, opening Christmas presents is a lot of fun. But in our SA Live Christmas primetime show, we have several Ooh, gifts to heavy. give to you. I better not don't break it. Much. I won't. Don't break it. Can I peek? Don't break it. Because if that's mine, don't break it. <laughs> Put it down. Ooh, wait, you see what's in there. Put it down. It's. I think it. It smells good. Oh, just wait. <laughs> or is that your cologne? Both. <laughs> oh, we got Christmas cookies. We have a beautiful Christmas setup here. Uh, uh, no, no, no! Oh, don't touch it. anything yet. You gotta save it for the show. I wanna open a present. With Christmas days away, many families here in San Antonio are looking for a way to put food on the table. That's why David Elder is hosting the Merry Eats drive through event on Christmas Eve. 10,000 meals will be given out for free. It includes a turkey dinner with all the trimmings. The event is happening at Champion Soccer Complex at Old Spanish Trails Park. That's in the 3600 block of Fredericksburg Road. It's this Thursday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. For more information, head over to ksat.com. And another look at weather before you go. It's going to be a great rest of the day. 74 for the high, but increasing cirrus clouds are going to make the great conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter difficult to see tonight. But you should be able to see it when we have clear skies Wednesday night and Thursday night. It just peaks tonight. Uh, speaking of Wednesday, a cold front is going to arrive, and that's going to set up a nice and cool Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Christmas Eve Thursday, our high temperatures will struggle to get out of the 50s, and Christmas Day will start off freezing with the high temperature only in the 60s. You know, there have been Christmases past that we've reached 80 degrees, so it is nice to see it a little bit cool this year. And that's all of our show for now. It is a SA Live primetime special encore with Mike and Fiona. Mike's ready to dig into the packages <laughs> and the cookies. It all starts right now. Life in 2020, and all through the year, challenges were faced, pressure, and fear. People were nestled snug in their homes, while the SA Live team ensured you were never alone. Mike, Fiona, and team were with us along the way. These diligent elves brought forth a show day after day. So grab some hot cocoa, fill up your cup. This community we love never gives up. Goodness, peace, and prosperity is here. So sit back, relax, as we spread holiday cheer. Fiona, what are you doing? What are you wearing? Uh, you're underdressed. You're overdressed. It's the Christmas show. It's the Christmas show. Uh -huh. Oh, you weren't in the meeting. What meeting? The meeting that you always kind of nap through. Uh, mm. You have a pair of matching jammies in the Weather Center. Like that? Yes. Let me look. Ooh, I like these jammies. These are nice. Ooh, yes, yeah. that looks so much better. Feeling cozy? Yes, mm -hmm. with cookies and mm -hmm. hot chocolate and everything. Yes. This nice. This is how you want to feel all nice and cozy when you open gifts. And we are celebrating with gifts tonight. Lots and lots of gifts. Yes, indeed. It is just like Christmas morning around here. But it is evening. And good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Osterhage. And I'm Fiona Gorostiza. This is SA Live's Christmas in Primetime show brought to you by James Avery. And, of course, as Fiona was talking about, it is all about the gifts this year. Those that have been given, those received, and of course, those enjoyed. So we hope this show is a gift to you, all of our KSAT viewers, because you are our gift all year long. It includes an up-close look at the matriarch behind Delia's Tamales, the new spot in town this year that has customers lining up for days. Plus, a trip to Fredericksburg for a holiday recipe that will impress for less than $50. And a mariachi twist on your favorite Christmas carols. The all-female group Mariachis Las Alteñas take over Market Square tonight. Now that's a gift for sure. So to kick off the night, Mike, why don't you open our first gift and see where we're headed? I will. I could open that first <laughs> gift. You know, a lot of folks have had to put off any sort of travel this holiday season, going to Grandma's house, over the river and through the woods, but we have the gift of lights. Yeah, Fiona, Jen, David and I went all around San Antonio and surrounding areas to find and free light displays, all the beautiful twinkling lights, and support local. If you want to feel festive,
Kitchen for free in the new Braunfels area, we are going to show you some great places to check out the lights. One of the great spots is right here in downtown New Braunfels. We are in the main plaza where, of course, you can see the trees are all lit up. They've got a great gazebo with lights that folks love to take pictures in and a giant Christmas tree and the former Comal Courthouse is also lit up. Another great place to stroll and see some lights is right here in green. There are also those neighborhood gems that truly sparkle over the season. Located at the University of the Incarnate Word from now until January 6th, the Light the Way Christmas Light event is going down from dusk until dawn. You and your family will get to travel in your vehicle around the campus and experience the beauty of one million twinkling Christmas lights in the safety of your own vehicle. Pets are allowed on campus, and don't forget, the little ones love it too. Hi, Daddy. One of the coolest, best things you can do in San Antonio for free this holiday season is to drive through UIW for their Light the Way. It's the 34th annual event that they've had here. But this year, you get to stay in your car, you get to socially distance, have fun, bring the family, and when you're out here walking around, don't forget to bring your mask, and you can enjoy the lights walking around the family. Our little one, he loves it, and we brought our my in-laws out here with us as well, and actually my wife's filming this, so um, it's a whole family event. They do a great job here every year, and I have to say this year, it just feels extra special. All the twinkling lights, all the colors, when you look off into the distance and you see everything like this, there's really no other experience like this in this area that you can get for free. It's known as the twinkliest town in Texas, and you can see why there's lights all around. The Lights Spectacular in Johnson City. It's about an hour drive from San Antonio. There's a map available to help guide you through this tiny, twinkly town. It's really cool. Look at me. My recommendation, park. Get off, order food from Pecan Street Brewery when you're about 25 minutes away. Sit outside, enjoy delicious food, maybe a reindeer-inspired beer. The courthouse is gorgeous. Wow. This is an experience. If Johnson City's a bit too far, Bernie always has you covered. Festive decor, free parking, and so many local shops. The icicle lights. Ooh. It's a decades-old tradition. The annual Windcrest Light Up does not disappoint. Residents here go above and beyond, finding their inner Clark Griswold, attracting drive-by spectators from all over. Always one of our favorites. The best part? You can enjoy it all from the comfort of your vehicle, like my wife Bonnie and I did, and we brought this little furry guy along, too. And who says you need a radio for Christmas carols? That's very cool. I love this. This year's theme, Let Freedom Ring, a tribute to the military. Families here like the Hamiltons plan for this all year long, knowing living here in Windcrest means they'll have a crowd drive through to enjoy the free light show. Something smells really, really good in here. Oh, Dahlia's tamales. This was such a great gift in 2020 for so many, including us. Uh, may I? Oh, okay. You may not know the story behind this remarkable cult following. We decided to send our foodie, David Elder, out there to talk with the matriarch behind those wonderful tamales. Delia's Tamales is a Texas tradition. The massively popular tamal restaurant attracts customers from around the United States, especially during the holidays. This tamal hotspot operates like a well-oiled machine, something that Delia Lubin, the owner and founder, has worked on since the restaurant's humble beginnings. Almost 30 years ago, you started making all these tamales with only five pounds of masa, right? Yes. Tell me about that experience. Oh, yo, yo, I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> Before the 
first restaurant opened in South McAllen in 1998, Delia made tamales and sold them to neighbors and friends to provide for her family. It was very, my sister and I, she's the one to, to start to teach me to do the tamales. We start with a five pounds of masa and we sell it around the house and the profit that we have is to 250 for each one. The tamales Delia was making outgrew the holiday demand and expanded into a year-round business. Where did the recipe come from? From my mother and her uh, uh, mother-in-law. Oh, wow, okay. And yes. so her mother-in-law? Yes. Oh, wow. Did your mother or your mother's mother-in-law, did they get to see all of this? No. What would you, what do you think your mother would say if she got to see how all this came up like this? I guess she doesn't believe it. <laughs> no, because it was a surprise for me too, the way the people, you know, como te digo, de la manera que, te voy a decir en español, o no, how do you say, the people, the way, um, loves us or hug us, you know, yeah. the, the welcome, you. yes, yes. Yeah. this is the word, yes. embrace us, yes. First Delia's Tamales opened 22 years ago with the help and support of her family. And to Delia, family is everything. I want to say thank you to everybody. I have a family, a very good family than my employees because they're very loyal, very, uh, they take care of the business like uh, they belong to them. And I'm very happy for them and I'm happy because they do the job the way I want it and it's wonderful. But I have to say, the best thing that I can say is thank to all my customers, especially from here from San Antonio. They used to go to the valley, bring it over here, and now I'm here and it's a big surprise for me the way they welcome, they give it to us. And I want to say thank you. As of 2020, there are seven locations throughout the great state of Texas. The newest location opened up this year in San Antonio. Each location freshly steams their tamales on site and packages them for hungry customers. This process guarantees a perfectly cooked tamale every time. So when Delia was starting out the business and she was going door to door and there wasn't even a restaurant brick and mortar yet, her daughter, her youngest daughter, would run to each of the buildings and the businesses and sell the tamales. And it was a big part for their family to do on the Fridays and Saturdays to help make some money for the family. And to think that it's transformed from going from that to you don't have to have publicity for something like this and people just wrap around your building all day every day i mean it's a huge accomplishment delia thank you so much for having us out here if you're looking for the best addition to your table this holiday season look no further delia's tamales i mean this is where it's at you get the salsa you get the green you get the red you get the sweet tamales you get the veda cruz style which is the first time that i've had here and you're going to change the whole dynamic of the evening people are just going to be happy and smiling because the food's so good this is where it's at. I really appreciate your time. I know you're a busy woman and you've brought your family here as well. And they're, they're awesome. They've helped out so much. And uh, I look forward to walking out of here with at least three to four dozen, maybe more uh, before. I do it. And Sam for him too. Yeah, Sam, yeah, Ben gets some too. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, thank you. Keep eating San Antonio. And for SA Live, I'm David Elder. So much family history and passion poured into these tamale recipes. Mm. Did you want one? Well, I guess not anymore. I'm going to have to go get in that long line. Either there or there's so many other places around town. Just go to our website, salive.com, and there's a list of all sorts of places so you can grab these, oh, wonderful Christmas treats for your small family gatherings. These are delicious. <laughs> Still ahead on SA Live, New Orleans roots with a Texas-sized heart. This restaurant owner has big plans to feed dozens of homeless San Antonians despite being 91 years old. And honoring those who serve, a military widow and her children get a huge surprise from a very special elf who's out to grant wishes for heroes. Stay with us. I am Santa Claus, you're watching F.A. Live. Merry Christmas! Time to get back to our gifts to you. Oh, here, open that one. Oh, let's see, what do we got, what do we got? <gasps> of course, Military City USA. We are happy to share more about Wish for Our Heroes. The nonprofit grants wishes all year long. And this time of year, we get to tag along for some special holiday wishes with a very special elf making the deliveries. 
each Christmas we go to the local military bases and we ask if, if there are any families that are struggling that need help. And Adriana uh, is the name of, of the lady that we're surprising today. And her husband actually passed away on November 4th. Uh, his name was David and he already had a couple health uh, conditions. And then in July he contracted COVID-19 uh, COVID and he fought COVID for several months. And eventually the side, the side effects from that took his life. And so now Adriana is there as a single mom uh, with four children. We have several volunteers that have gone out, uh, specifically George Hill uh, and his family, who you may know very well. This year I know my husband couldn't do it, you know, with this whole quarantine, him being in the NBA right now. So he gave it a challenge for me and my Monet team to just get together and still be able to grant wishes. We've been thinking about, you know, an idea to give back, especially during these hard times. So we thought this would be the perfect thing to do. wanted to, uh, we know you all have had a very difficult year, so we wanted to stop on behalf of uh, Wish for Our Heroes and Sam and George Hill and Robin and Gordon Hayward. Uh, we brought some of our friends, Santa and Mrs. Claus, and we just wanted to thank you uh, for your sacrifice and just let you know that uh, we're here and that you're not alone on Christmas. So we brought a few things for your family. Hopefully, kids, hopefully you can figure out what to do with all this stuff. I was expect like just a couple uh, presents, but no, nothing like this. I'm grateful for having this and uh, I'm sorry, I'm so emotional. And uh, it's been a rough year for my kids and me. All my family is in Mexico, so technically it's only me and my kids. And I feel love for you guys, and thank you very much. Still ahead on SA Live, a church on the far southwest side turns into a drive-in service complete with soulful music. We get a performance tonight from their choir. Oh. Next, pull off a homemade holiday meal for less than $50. We're taking you to a Hill Country road trip for some tips from the sauce experts. Hi, I'm Stephanie Cerna. And I'm Mark Austin from GMSA. And we wanted to wish you guys a happy holidays. And a happy new year. And can we take a nap now? <laughs> Welcome back to SA Live's Christmas show. You know, the Texas Hill Country could very well be the perfect winter getaway. But where to? Ah. <gasps> Fisher and Weezer. That's a perfect gift. So enjoy this holiday recipe straight from their Doss Peach House kitchen in Fredericksburg. It's known as the most Christmassy town in all of Texas, with a German twist, small town shops, and plenty of wine. At Doss Peach House, we welcome families and pets. And you can come out here, as you can see, it's very wide open spaces. We allow for social distancing. They're known for those signature sauces. Tonight, we learn an easy holiday recipe. This holiday season, a lot of people will be hosting that maybe aren't used to hosting. So today we're getting help from Deanna with Fisher and Weezer. And you have a recipe that is $50 maybe or less? Yes, a really simple recipe. And so we put together a beautiful meal that can be done in under two hours. We have a pork tenderloin wrapped in bacon, which we will be putting our wonderful cherry pomegranate habanero sauce on to glaze it. And then we have um, mashed potatoes. Everybody loves mashed potatoes, but we're spicing that up with our toasted garlic horseradish dip. Time to get started. Hope you're hungry. So I'm going to ask you, Jen, we, you see we've laid our bacon out here really nice. And if you would like, would you please roll this up? It's real simple. You just do like that. Easy enough. So you have the bacon here. Right. And it's pretty. It is and see, pretty. this is kind of fun because we wanted to make something that was elegant. People are doing things differently. Let's just put a few in here. The thing I love about y'all's recipes is they always they look great but you know you can just spend a little and still get a lot out that's of that's right okay and now that we have all the toothpicks in good job on that we just will pick this up and lay it
it on our baking dish and go ahead and move into the prepping the potatoes for baking. So Jen, all you do is sprinkle a little olive oil on those, you know, plain raw potatoes and then a little garlic salt. Yeah. Wrap it up in the tin foil. Now when you have those all wrapped up, they're ready to go in the oven at the same time as our beautiful pork tenderloin and it's going to be at 375 for about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay, Jen, we're done. Now we what we've done here with our beautiful pork is we got it out of the oven and we left it in the foil for a little bit and we just poured the cherry pomegranate habanero over it and we let it sit to let it rest and while that is rest was resting now it's time to go ahead and prepare the mashed potatoes and that looks beautiful and it smells amazing so let's get our potatoes going so I see we left one here but this is how easy it is right it's, it's that easy then you just add a little cream a lot of people have their own mashed potato recipe so we we use cream, we use butter. Then we add salt and pepper to taste. And the secret ingredient, Fisher & Weezer toasted garlic horseradish sauce. Um, if you have kiddos, you may want to, you know, add that after you've already got them mashed and, you know, take a portion out for the kids who may not like the horseradish. Then you just take your masher and start to mash. Now, time to plate. So we have some great little kitchen hacks for the plating of your beautiful Christmas dinner. And the first thing we are using is a biscuit cutter that we've put a little bit of olive oil on the inside and you can simply just spoon your potatoes into this and it helps you to make a beautiful little stack that can be really the base. And then you just lift it off and you have a beautiful little potato stack. Then we are going to plate the beautiful pork tenderloin. We're gonna use this and kind of prop it up on those potatoes and now would be the time to go ahead if anybody wants extra sauce you can drizzle it on here and then to add a little color and some Christmas fun to our plate we have gone ahead and made some pea puree which you just take a can of sweet peas drained and mix a little chicken broth in and you just simply pour it around your potatoes so you've got the green going on there and it looks really pretty the garnish is the finishing touch and we so often forget to do that this. We've got the little pomegranate arils, which bring the red in, and we drizzle those around on the pea puree. And then, of course, fresh chives for the potatoes and a finishing garnish of any kind of um, herb, fresh herb that you like. Of course, you can get them already cut and ready to go in HEB. And there you have it. So many recipes are available on their website, including cocktails using their signature sauces. Head to SALive.com. The article is on the homepage. Christmas crafting challenge. Less than 20 bucks with a little coaching. Let's see what we create. And next, Marbiachi Magic. This all-female group puts a twist on Christmas carols. Well, it's been a tough 2020, but we're ending the year with some holiday love. Hope you have a safe holiday season. Merry Christmas to you all from the KSAT 12 Weekend Crew. Okay, time to open the next gift. What would our show be without music? Yes, tonight we show you two different groups that have changed with the times to continue sharing their music. We begin with Mariachi's Las Alteñas. We've had to kind of, you know, just kind of roll with it this year, but um, we're staying positive and uh, continuing to, you know, share our music with our audiences as best as we can. It's definitely affected our business in a way just because we haven't been able to do a lot of the performances we used to be able to do. We would do a lot of shows and we would travel, um, a lot of stage performances. We've had to get used to wearing masks when we perform and a lot of Zoom uh, performances. There was a time when we were doing Zoom rehearsals just so that we could continue the momentum um, of working together. Our gift is playing music to all who listen.
my goodness, she has a wonderful voice. It was just so, yeah. It just gets you in the Christmas spirit. It does, a warm <laughs> cup of hot chocolate. Okay, over on the far southwest side, there's a church without walls that turns its Sunday services into a drive-in. For not only prayer, but the joy of song. A lot of anxiety can happen with everything that's going on, but music just kind of does something that really lifts your spirits. And especially if you start singing, you can't be sad and down when you start singing a song. This is actually my first time um, since the pandemic doing music. So I've taken this time to do my chaplaincy work. We had five acres of land that we knew that we could use. And so we decided, you know, the biggest part about church is not just the singing, it's not just the preaching. The biggest part about church is actually the fellowship of communion. COVID is not an obstacle, it's really created the way. us in this Christmas craft off. Hey guys, I am out here at the Dollar Tree and I am going to challenge Mike to create a centerpiece with items I find around here. They have wonderful Christmas items out here and a whole bunch of different craft items and we're going to put that all together and we're going to create an inexpensive centerpiece that you can put on your table or maybe the fireplace as well. Okay guys, let's go shopping. Ah, that's what I'm looking for. We got picture frames. I have a great idea in my head. Look how cute. These are all Christmassy looking. Yet they have these all the time out here at Dollar Tree. Oh, I hope Mike can figure out what I've got in my head out here. <laughs> Oh, we gotta have lights. It's not Christmas without lights. Now you guys know I love to make bows and you gotta have that wire ribbon. So look how cute this is. I am so excited to be at the Dollar Tree today. It is one of my most favorite places to get craft supplies. If you know me, you know I love a good wreath project, and so does Fiona, so I'm excited to be partnering with her today because we've made a lot of wreaths together on air before, and I'm gonna really challenge her crafting abilities this time around. And I'm looking for a wreath base, and I found some of my favorites, which are styrofoam wreaths. So they carry these, they're about 10 inches wide, and they're kind of small on their own, so I'm gonna get three of them, because I think they would look really good as a set of three on the wall, and I'm gonna see what Fiona can do. Three different ways, three different types of decorations. So let's go find some things to decorate them with. 
So here is another great option to wrap your wreathing swift for the holidays. This is just some evergreen garland. I think we've got enough for her to make three different wreaths. We'll see what she does with it. I'm excited to find out. All right, Mike. Okay. So we are going to make a centerpiece. Mm -hmm. I've got picture frames. Ooh. I've got um, garland, and I've got ribbon, and I've got berries, and it's going to kind of look like a lantern. So picture a lantern, ah. and we're going to fill it with very pretty things. Build. You build. can build, build. it. Build. Fiona, do you know the one thing I love making more than anything else? What? A wreath. Yes! Oh. You have made a lot of wreaths with me before, so I know you're a very talented wreath crafter, and so for today, we are going to make not one, but three different wreaths. And okay. I've got plenty of fun stuff for you to work with today. I've got kind of three distinct themes in mind, but I'll see if you can catch on to kind of what I'm feeling or if you want to take it into a whole different direction. You got it. You got this. You got right? it. I okay. Do. How many are you doing? How many do you have to do? Mike. How many do no you have to do? No talking during the test. <laughs> Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm great. This is <laughs> How's your lighting project? <laughs> it is going to be illuminating. <laughs> it's like threading a needle. It's just turning. what Mike is doing. He took my inspiration and he kicked it up another level. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to see how it turns out. I knew I was asking a lot of Fiona when I had her do three separate crafts, but I knew if there was anyone that could, would be up for the challenge, it was her. I gave her very little direction and she just took it and ran with it. When in doubt, like Adina says, more hot glue. Speaking of gifts, you know who's a wonderful gift to our community? Ma Harper. And she's got big plans to give back this holiday season. Hey everyone, Stephen Eces from the Night Beat here. And on behalf of everyone here at KSAT 12, we just want to wish you and your family a very safe and a very Merry Christmas. And that goes to the entire SA Live crew as well. Mike, Fiona, Jen. You know, I do have to say one thing before I let you go because, you know, Mike and I are good friends. But I, um, did you notice his beard? Yeah. He's got a future as a Santa Claus. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Very gray. Matches the hair. <laughs> Merry I'm <Christmas>. impressed. <laughs> Mall Santa, think about it, Mike. <laughs> she is truly a gift to our community, and I know that there are so many other people that she has touched and embraced that feels that she's even more. I do not want credit for what God gave me an idea to do. I want those that carry it out for me to get the credit. She's been a blessing to me in so many ways because when I get the men and the women in and because of their background, it's hard to give them a job. And mom has hired so many of my women and given them second chances, given them a job, as well as work with me when we feed the communities. Ma Alice Harper. If you don't know the name, maybe you've seen her on Mike Rose returning the favor or Food Network's diners, drive-ins and dives recognized for her made from scratch Cajun food. But her gift, while delicious on a plate, is much more than that. She's incredible. Once you get to know mom, um, she's your friend for life. They asked me what did I want. I 
and all I wanted was to give to somebody who couldn't give back. But Thanksgiving, it came to me about people who pride has been snatched away. Knowing the hardships many are facing with the pandemic, Ma teams up with local ministries with her ideas to give and continue to hire people with a rough past. With this pandemic that's going on and this crazy world, she still wants to love and embrace everyone. It's because I'm the second oldest of 16. I was born and raised in New Orleans and I'm born in 1929. That was hard times real hard time and had God not allowed someone to help my mother with all of her kids who knows where I would be and I always said if I ever lived to get grown and be on my own I would never forget from where I came from. This Christmas she plans to feed a hundred homeless people in and around the downtown area buying throws and socks as well, so they also get a Christmas gift. If you can't tell by now, her compassion is contagious. She is willing to give back to her family, her friends, and people that she doesn't know. She meets no stranger. You yourself have a lot to receive, but what are you giving? Thank you all for tuning in tonight. We have to give a very special big shout out to 8th Street Market up in Comfort for decorating our set. We couldn't have asked for anything prettier. Yes, absolutely incredible. So be sure to check them out. And of course, we want to thank you, of course, for sticking with us and supporting this show, which of course helps celebrate all of you out there this year, because it's been a tough year for everyone. It has, but you know something together, we, uh, we try to make it special. We hope we make you smile a little bit. We have a fun time doing this show, and we're going to be here all next year as well. Yes, so Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.